and the light, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated? Welcome to Holy Trinity Church this afternoon as we come together to remember John. It's very moving actually to see a crowd of faces. Clearly John touched many, many lives. I didn't have the privilege of knowing John, but it is my privilege to conduct this ceremony to collectively remember the life of John well. So today you bring your thoughts, your recollections, your stories and your memories of John to this service. And I hope you'll share them, for I'm fairly sure you all have very distinct recollections of John, different narratives and different stories that are unique to you. So please do hang around and share some of those stories together. But today we come together to remember John Frederick Danes. We come to share that real sense of loss of the death of a loved one, to many an enigma, to the community a ray of sunshine, to a select few a close friend, to all someone affectionately known as Laughing John. This day we bring our own experiences and memories of John to this service, and those feelings of love, grief and respect, for this is an occasion to express our faith in Jesus Christ, and to share our feelings as we say farewell. Also just on a practical note, if you wish to make any donations today, then those donations will be divided between the charity minds and also the fundraising that's going on towards a memorial for John. And also after the service, there will be a service at the crematorium, but it is a private service for those already invited. So today we meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace, mercy and peace be with each and every one of you. For today we come to remember before God, John, to give thanks for his life and to commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, and to comfort one another in our grief. But first, would you bow your heads as we pray. Loving God, would you draw near to us as we draw near to you? Would you speak to us through the words of Scripture and tributes, through our hymns and through our prayers? through all that we will share this day, so that believing in the good news of Christ and trusting in him, 
we may receive the comfort he promises, the peace that passes all understanding, and the assurance of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is just the one hymn, The Lord My Shepherd, which you have printed in the order of service in front of you. Would you please stand as we join together? This part of the service when we try and remember well. We try and capture a life in tributes, eulogies. Actually, I say it's always the hardest part. Not because of the public nature of speaking to a room full of people, but actually it's impossible to capture a life with words. You know that. Therefore, whatever the tribute is I have, and I said I didn't have the privilege of knowing John, is always lacking. Which is why you, as the keepers of stories and memories, you fill in the gaps. You bring to mind your own recollections of John. So as best as I can do, I can just paint a very short and in one sense brief picture of John. And I hope that actually you fill in the blanks yourself. John Frederick Danes. Laughing John. Born in Rochford Hospital on the 10th of August. 1952, to Cecil and Florence, who were married here in Holy Trinity on the 5th of June, 1948. John's father was a, a civil defence gas lighter and may well have been the inspiration behind John's own career and qualifications in engineering. John was baptised here on the 5th of October of the same year and it was here some 67 years ago that John was commended to God in baptism 
And therefore it seems fitting and right that also here we commend John in that next stage of life's journey. John was a rainy man, attending Fitzwymouth School, then Mid-Essex Technical College, doing well in subjects including maths, metalwork, chemistry, technical drawing and woodwork, and going on to gain a high national certificate in mechanical engineering. Clearly John was, and as many people have mentioned already, very bright and very intelligent, with a real aptitude for engineering, as he then went on to study at Southbank Polytechnic, gaining a first-class Bachelor's of Science with honours in mechanical engineering. John's leading certificate from school said this, an excellent pupil who has always given of his best, reliable and self-sufficient, and his best subjects being science and practical subjects. As per John's school reports and excellent qualifications, it was no surprise that his career was focused on the practical and engineering skills that he possessed, working for Marconi as an apprentice draftsman, and then for a number of major firms located around the world, including companies in London, Norway, Spain and Aberdeen, all relating to pipework and engineering. Of course, John being John, also told people he worked for many other clandestine organisations, which included being an undercover agent for the British intelligence, CIA, FBI, KGB, and my favourite, an undercover agent for God. <laughs> Things must be my job. Many of you, though, I'm sure are more familiar with John's volunteering work in some of our local charity shops, including Sue Ryder and the Animal Trust. It's worth bringing in, because there have been a number of tributes shared, actually an anonymous tribute that was given to us to share. And it says this. I never knew John's personal life story, but often saw him around and about Rayleigh. There is one particular memory of him that stands out and to me, that gives me insight into his character and the impact he could have on people around him. It was on a miserable Monday morning, just in my, use your imagination, you know, like what we've got out there. <laughs> it was on a miserable Monday morning when I ventured into a charity shop in the high street. The look of everyone's face that day matched my own and the dreary weather outside. No one spoke while we all wallowed in our gloomy moods. Suddenly, the door of the shop sprang open and in strode John, chatting away and letting out a loud burst of laughter, his well-known laughter. Before long, the mood in the shop changed dramatically as we all began to chuckle and then laugh as well. We were not laughing at John, but laughing with him. For someone who appeared to have nothing to offer in life, he gave so much that day in the only way he knew how. And that's a tribute that's been shared and echoes actually lots of tributes, and I'm sure echoes lots of your memories of John. John, of course, had also many other interests outside of work, which included, in his own words, socialising and disco dancing, <laughs> repairing vintage cars, helping others in repairing their cars, fishing, as well as practical DIY around his own home. As I'm sure many of you know, John's life hadn't been the easiest. His mum passed away when John was 25, and a work-related incident in the 80s caused John great distress. And also, only a few short years later, his father passed away in 1986. All of these events incredibly difficult to cope with, but from the stories told, John, despite these things, or maybe because of them, sought to bring a little bit of laughter and joy to those around him. And it seems appropriate to conclude with one other short tribute that was written by a close friend of his, Margaret. If you're happy for me to share on your behalf this tribute. I first met John in 1995, after me and my son Adam moved to Raven. I was on my way to start a new job. My time to spare, as I did not start until one o'clock, I popped into the Animal Trust shop where John was a volunteer. 
John sold me some goods, but unfortunately, by mistake, overcharged me. I returned to the shop and John refunded the difference. From that day, our friendship started. John told me he went to a barber shop to have his hair styled like Rod Stewart, his favourite singer, which is why we have the Rod Stewart music. The barber had cut John's hair far too short for John's liking, and from there on, John always cut his own hair. John was a complete gentleman towards me and my son Adam, and to people he trusted. I believe in angels, and angels appear in many forms and guises. And John was an angel amongst men. Rest in peace, John, with your heavenly hosts. Love always. Margaret. It always seems sad to move on from this part of the service, because actually we're here to remember John. So actually we're going to pause and we're going to introduce a piece of music, Abba, I Believe in Angels, for you to gather your own thoughts, your own recollections of John. And then we'll move the service on. So, can we just pause and enjoy this music? 